Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2021 sci-fi comedy film, titled Don't Look Up. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Young astronomy PhD student Kate Dibiuski is working with a Subaru telescope in Michigan when she discovers a comet passing by near Earth. Her professor, Dr. Randall Mendy, congratulates her on her findings and after naming the comet after her, they calculate its trajectory, coming to the conclusion that the comet will hit Earth in six months and, because of its huge size, it will cause planet-wide extinction. On the edge of panic, they call NASA to inform them of this discovery, and the head of Planetary Defense Coordination Office, Dr. Teddy Oglethorpe tells them to come to DC so they can have a meeting with the president about this issue, which is now considered classified information. They go to the White House early in the morning and are left waiting the whole day without hearing a word from the president, who is prioritizing taking care of a scandal involving one of her candidates. Kate and Randall are sent to spend a night in a hotel, where they call their loved ones and try to find comfort in their voices without being able to tell them what is going on. Randall calls his wife June and his sons to check on them, and Kate talks to her boyfriend Philip, who works as a journalist for an important newspaper. The following day, Kate, Randall, and Teddy finally get to see President Janie Orlean and the Chief of Staff Jason Orlean, who also happens to be the President's son. They do not take their warnings seriously, saying they are warned about the end of the world every month with excuses like economic collapse and loose nukes, so for now, she wants them to sit in asses until the midterms are over. Seeing as the White House will do nothing, Teddy wants them to leak the information to the press, which could get them in trouble since talking about classified information is illegal, but it is still better than dying to a comet. While Sir Peter Isherwell, tech billionaire CEO of Bash, also learns of the incoming comet thanks to some astronomer friends of his, Philip gets Kate and Randall an interview with the New York Herald. They accept to publish their story, especially when they confirm the data with other scientists and hear the White House denies ever meeting them, but first, they want them to appear on the morning talk show The Daily Rip, hosted by Brie Eventy and Jack Bremer. They are not taken seriously by the hosts either, who think they must keep bad news light, and Kate snaps, getting angry on camera and pointing out how terrifying the situation is before storming off. Randall does stay to finish the interview, and after they are done, Brie invites him to have drinks with her later. Afterward, the New York Herald's marketing team shows them the results of their presentation. The singer that appeared before them talking about her breakup had more mentions on social media, Kate has become a meme as an angry lady, and Randall is seen as extremely handsome for a scientist, but nobody cares about what they had to say. The newspaper decides to cancel their support, claiming NASA said the data is not good enough, but they quickly realize the head of NASA, who is not even an actual astronomer, is one of the president's donors and working under her agenda. To make matters worse, Philip takes advantage of Kate going viral and writes an article about how he used to sleep with her, which she accepts as a breakup, and Randall cannot keep himself out of social media, arguing with anybody that questions his scientific knowledge and conspiracy theorists. When the president finds herself as part of a bigger scandal involving some intimate pictures of her private parts, she sends the FBI to bring Kate, Randall, and Teddy to her office again and apologizes for having ignored them. Kate quickly picks up on the fact they are doing this just because they are afraid to lose the midterms, but accepts to help anyway because getting to stop the comet is the most important priority at the moment. The president makes a national broadcast, announcing the comet is real and that they have a plan to destroy it, they will launch a spacecraft that can strike the comet using nuclear weapons. Despite Randall's opinion that this should be a mission guided by remote technology, Janie chooses General Benedict Drass to pilot the spacecraft, because she thinks having a hero as the image of their plan will help people cope with the news. Janie and Randall begin appearing in all kinds of TV shows and magazine covers as the event goes viral on the internet, finally getting the attention it deserves. After appearing on The Daily Rip again, Randall and Bree end up sleeping together while Teddy and Kate argue with Comet deniers on a conservative show. The day of the launch comes, and the event is broadcast globally. The spacecraft successfully takes off, but General Drask's microphone is quickly muted because he keeps saying incredibly bigoted things on camera. Everyone is ready to celebrate the fact the comet will be gone soon, but when Isherwell arrives and talks privately to the president, they are shocked to discover the spacecraft is coming back, Janie has cancelled the mission. Some hours later, while the world is still trying to understand what happened, Randall is assigned as chief science advisor to the White House and brought to an emergency cabinet meeting while Teddy and Kate are left behind. It turns out the reasons why they cancel the mission is because Isherwell, who is also one of the president's donors, has discovered that the comet is composed of trillions of dollars worth of rare earth minerals that technology manufacturers use in objects like phones, and they have been running short of them because China owns most of the mines. The plan is to send some drones to fragment the comet and let those smaller fragments fall into the ocean to be mined later. Randall does not agree with this, especially when he realizes that the technology Isherwell is going to use has not undergone scholarly peer review and every scientist that tried to speak against it has been silenced, but the matter is out of his control now. After the meeting, he gets together with Kate and Teddy in a bar and tells them all about Isherwell. Some of the people overhear them and Kate decides they deserve to know the truth, so she announces loudly for everyone to hear that the president will allow the comet to hit the planet so rich people can get even richer. 
This incites a series of riots around the city, so the FBI arrests Kate and charges her with sharing classified information and damage of private property, but they agree to let her go if she signs a deal where she agrees not to talk about the subject in public or media anymore and to get off the grid, which Kate obviously accepts and returns to her little hometown in Illinois. Getting her old life back is not easy, since her parents will not take her back because they support the government and do not want any traitors in their house. She begins working as a cashier at a supermarket where he meets Yul and his friends, who admire her and invite her to hang out with them. After discovering they have been stealing from the market and letting them go anyway because she does not care anymore considering the end of the world is coming, Kate accepts to join them, beginning a relationship with Yul. Meanwhile, Randall continues to work for the president, thinking that is the only thing he can do to help the planet in some way, and has an ongoing affair with Bree. This blows up on his face when one evening, the two of them return to their hotel room and find June there, waiting to surprise her husband. Randall does not even apologize, just tries to make up some excuses, so June throws his pill bottles at him before leaving for good. After having an argument with Isherwell about his faulty science and being told algorithms say he will die alone, Randall appears on the Daily Rip and finally loses control. Furious, he yells on national television and calls everyone out for not being more worried about the comet, which people had started to believe is not real. He also points out how Isherwell is shutting up all scientists that do not agree with him, that the president lied and that the whole administration has lost its mind. The FBI catches him after this and offers him the same deal they gave Kate, so Bree breaks up with him. Sometime later, Randall is driving back to Michigan and Kate is hanging out with Yule when they both look at the sky and see the same thing, the comet is finally close enough to be visible by the naked eye. The two of them record themselves with it and ask the world to see it, starting a movement called Look Up that millions of people around the world join and make posts about on the internet. Randall even starts appearing on TV again, calling the government out for their awful plans, and even gaining the support of two famous singers that write a special Just Look Up song. This causes Janie to retaliate with her own movement called Don't Look Up, which is supported by millions of conservative voters and conspiracy freaks that believe her when she says Randall only wants them to be afraid and lose their freedom. Riots and protests take over the streets while Russia, India, and China work together to send their own spacecraft to stop the comet, but their launch fails and the spacecraft explodes. As the comet gets even closer and the deniers finally start catching on the lies, Randall takes Kate and Yule grocery shopping then drives them back to his hometown so they can spend their last day together as a family. Under these extreme circumstances, June decides to take him back after admitting she cheated on him back in college as well, and Teddy joins them shortly after as well. All of them have dinner together, sharing anecdotes and sending one last prayer to God while waiting for the comet to strike. The night of the launch, while waiting to get started, Janie asks Isherwell what the algorithms say her death will be like, and he responds she will be killed by a Brontirock, whatever that may be. The spacecraft takes off and they lose some of the drones, but Isherwell anticipated there was a margin for error and claims everything is fine. However, he is incredibly wrong, and the rest of drones explode as soon as they make contact with the comet. Knowing they will be dead for sure now, Isherwell and Janie leave the premises to join other millionaires on a secret spaceship designed to keep its passengers alive cryogenically so they can flee Earth before doom strikes. Completely forgetting about her son, Janie calls Randall and offers him a place for him and his wife, but he turns it down, wanting to stay with them until the end. People around the world cling to their loved ones as the comet hits Earth and destroys life as we know it. The only survivor to come out from under the ruins is Jason, who immediately celebrates his life by taking a selfie. 22,740 years later, the ship with millionaires finally finds a planet with an atmosphere similar enough to Earth's for them to live in. Men and women are woken up from their cryogenic sleep and explore the area, and when Janie sees a beautiful new animal and tries to approach it, she is attacked by it, effectively getting killed by a Brontirock as predicted by the algorithms. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.